We are all eye-wateringly familiar with the seemingly never-ending migrant crisis here in the UK. Of course we are. We were just talking about it. But we're not the only ones. Our closest neighbours, the Republic of Ireland, are facing their own crisis, with net migration, believe it or not, being even higher per capita than here in the UK. It's around two per 1,000 people. You have to factor in there, though, don't you? The population of Ireland is around 5 million. That's a heck of a lot of people. Ireland is no stranger to political division and sometimes a little bit of civil unrest, to say the least. But divisions over migration seem to have now hit a boiling point, with anti- and pro-migrant demonstrations going head-to-head -head in Dublin city centre earlier this week. Should we take a little look, I think, at the leader of the Irish Freedom Party, Herman Kelly, speaking at one of these demos on Monday? Consider, no. What is going on in this country is very, very serious. We are facing becoming a minority in our own country. What we are talking about is about the future that Ireland, the Irish nation and people, have a future as a nation. Mm. That isn't just happening in Dublin, by the way. You're getting similar scenes popping up across Ireland. And it isn't all, because Ireland's capital was literally set ablaze after an Algerian migrant allegedly stabbed three people, including two children, outside a school in the city in December. I'm sure we all remember that. We covered it a lot on this show. It triggered riots right across Dublin. Now, it does beg the question, though, doesn't it? Why are the Irish, with whom we share such a strong bond and common interests, reacting so dramatically and so differently to migration woes than us here in Britain. Well, I'm telling you now about why it really matters to us here in Britain. Because if Ireland is accepting in a huge number of not just legal migrants, but asylum seekers as well, and they're putting them in a variety of different hotels, and the Irish at some times have started setting fire to some of these hotels. They started blockading them with much more regularity than we have over here. Well, what could a lot of these asylum seekers do? They can cross the border, can't they? into Northern Ireland and get into our own territory. And indeed, that is a massive concern. I had an off-the-record chat earlier today with a member of the House of Lords who said just that. Look, to discuss this story, I am joined by the man himself. He's the leader of the Irish Freedom Party. It's Herman Kelly. Herman, thank you very much. Great to have you on the show. Right, what's My going on in me. Ireland? Uh, as I said at the uh, rally on Monday, which was very well attended. It's a second colonisation of Ireland, and it's all approved and funded by the Irish government. Uh, Ireland currently has officially official figures is that 20 percent of our population are non-Irish. Now we do know that people who come here illegally generally do not fill in the census forms. So while the British figures, roughly 14% of your population are non-national, in Ireland, without any discussion and very little debate, over one in five of the people currently living in Ireland are now non-national. And that means that our population since 1995 has gone up by a whopping 42%. And that's without hardly any talk. Actually, what has happened is that the the uni party, as I call it, the, the political class, the media class and the NGO class have basically shouted down and abused anybody who would even dare to question the, the, the wisdom mm. of allowing so many large number of unvetted people into the country. OK, so there seems to be two different things happening here, doesn't there? You've got high levels of legal immigration, which people are saying is a problem. But you also have an issue when it comes to the asylum setup and the migrant hotels as well. Uh, and the people of Ireland, as yes. far as I can tell, a lot of them anyway, uh, seem, seem, to, seem to have had you know, more than enough of this right now. Uh, you guys have been taking to the streets a lot, haven't you? Yeah, like there was a very large rally in Dublin on Monday, uh, which I uh, spoke at. But all over the last uh, year and a half, roughly, there's been a very large number of rallies throughout the country Mm. Uh, because local communities are very cheesed off and have had enough of the large scale. It's not only the where a year and a half ago it was to do, people were talking about 
uh, the undermining the, the lack of services, so like number of doctors, uh, the, the loss of school places, how it was affecting people's quality of life. And then they were talking about the increase in crime and, and the cost to the taxpayer. But I, it has actually moved on in a very mm. short period of time. To, because the large, the, the huge numbers of people coming here, it's now an existential crisis for the continuation of Ireland as a nation and as a nation state. It's gone well beyond just, mm, oh yeah, we can't, we don't have enough doctors for the people coming here, and we don't like the increase in crime. Now it's become much more serious now because Ireland, like compared to the UK and America, etc., we have a small population on a small island. And it's our only homeland. Once we lose Ireland, there's no going home. There's no going home for Irish people to Australia or to America. This is our only homeland. And when well over one in five people are now non-national in Ireland, well, for the continuation of Ireland as our homeland, well, we've, we're, we've got large troubles. Yeah. And as well, you see clearly, obviously, in Ireland, huge elements of rural community, you know, pocketed quite small communities. And you plonk an asylum seeker hotel in the middle of that with no definitive end time, it fundamentally changes that entire community and quite possibly forever, doesn't it? The, the surprising part, yeah, as you point out, it's not just in Dublin, in the big cities. It's in small villages in rural Ireland in the west of Ireland. So in many villages, for example, in West Clare, which you would think would be a rural ideal, in many of these small villages now, Irish people are well outnumbered by people from... And asylum seekers are from safe countries such as Georgia, uh, uh, like other countries, uh, Afghanistan, mm. Nigeria, Algeria. Like in some of these countries, Afghanistan, Algeria have very are known to have very high crime rates. And for example, in 2022, there were 12 women were murdered in, in Ireland. Five of those women were murdered by non-nationals. And I'm sure you've heard of the case in Dublin recently. Yeah. Uh, two, two months ago, where an Algerian national stabbed three children and a woman teacher in the, uh, the, the he stabbed children in the neck in the middle of the day in a main street in Dublin. Of course, there was outrage about that. And there's been a number of murders over the last number of years. And as you pointed out at the start, yes, the government and the media want to talk about immigration. And it's all about asylum seekers and uh, refugees. But our main problem isn't that. It's actually completely legal migration through EU open borders and free movement. The, the media want to talk all the time about asylum seekers. Yeah. But our main problem is actually EU open borders. You, you know what is backfiring now on the kind of ruling elites in Ireland? I mean, obviously you do. You're literally at the coal face of this. But it is. I think they underestimated the actual strength of Irish national identity and pride and you know we here in england we, we we didn't lose that a long time ago but it was a lot more diluted i think in britain a, a, a much longer time ago and so yeah. when you see a higher influx of people you kind of absorb it a bit better and all of a sudden the die is cast before you know it's happened whereas in ireland especially getting those rural communities can i just ask you uh, herman quickly please so my understanding is that there are people now in northern ireland who are very very worried actually about what this means for them because they're worried that this could that become the new gateway for illegal immigration into the United Kingdom as, as well. Go on. Exactly. On that point, now, 60% of people who have applied for asylum in Ireland apply at the office in Dublin. They don't apply at the port of entry, be it at Dublin Airport, except, right, or, or the port in Ross Lair. So they've come into the country in a way unknown to the state. And and all of the people who arrive in Dublin Airport claiming asylum, 70% of those claim that from getting on a plane for which they had a passport and disembarking in Dublin and arriving at the customs, they, that they've lost their passport. Now, so we can see that we're being lied to. We're being made fools of. And that brings up the whole thing of the common travel area. How did they get into Dublin? As If they didn't come through Dublin Airport, uh, they may very well have come in through the common travel area through the north of Ireland. Yeah, mm. and on the point that you yeah. that you raised about this uh, Ireland 
molded and later. Yeah, we were never a, a, a colonizer. We were colonized. So we don't have any guilt complex about raising the issue yeah. about what is happening in Ireland now is is colonization without consent. It's a new plantation. Okay. And we didn't, we were never asked. We never gave approval. Um, and look, thank you. Uh, we're going to stick with this story for you know, the coming weeks, the coming months. So please keep us in the loop here as well at GB News, because again, people think, oh, this is Ireland. It's not Great Britain. It's not the United Kingdom. It has got massive consequences for us over All here. All across Europe. Uh, all right, Herman, thank you, mate. Take care. All right, it's Herman Kelly there.